you were talked about as the best prospect in NBA history. Is that something you want to be called? A prospect? What's a prospect? It's not really something. It's something that's about to become real, you know. So being the best prospect, is, 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 it's not really a thing. So it doesn't matter really. You know, I'm trying to be the best uh, in the league now, not in the imaginary of people. The Victor Wembanyama era is here. The NBA has been around for 78 years. And through that time, we have gone from the chosen one to the alien. How on earth did we escalate to this already? Thanks to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. The NBA has seen its fair share of freak athletes, whether it be LeBron James, Vince Carter, Shaq, etc. Victor Wembanyama's arrival shows us that those guys are the past, and he is the now. Standing at 7'3 with an 8'0 wingspan, yeah, you heard it right, an 8'0 wingspan. If you were tired of LeBron James' never-ending run, wait until you realize that Victor Wembanyama is only 20 years old. Bearing injury, of course, we're getting a guaranteed decade of plays like this. Somebody needs a body bag. That was terrible. Imagine if I told you that a rookie was in a head-to-head -head matchup with a prime Giannis Antetokounmpo. You'd think I was joking or something, but I'm not. Victor Wembanyama unfortunately lost that matchup, but man, that was a spectacle. There was a point in the game where Giannis dunked on Wemby, and then he tried to do it later in the game, and Wemby made sure to remind Giannis that he isn't just any rookie. The best part about the block was that it was in the clutch and it kept it a one possession game. That was also his fifth block of the night. A true contender for game of the year, even due to it going all the way down to the last possession, which of course led to Jeremy Sohan selling Victor Wembanyama. But back to the matter at hand, however. It is very difficult to say which side of the ball that Wemby is better at because he's elite on both ends of the floor. But I may have to lean towards his defensive side on this one. Let's take a look at this play for example. Victor Wembanyama starts his play in the free throw slash paint area. Yeah, somehow manages to not only contest the three from Andrew Wiggins, but also manages to block the shot entirely. There's also the block he had on Jalen Williams during a preseason game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Williams did a great move to get by Victor, yet somehow Victor still manages to erase the shot completely despite literally having a foot outside of the paint area and trailing from behind by a good amount. Imagine being so respected that opponents don't even dare to attack you on a 3 on 1 fast break. This kind of thing is simply unheard of until Victor Wembanyama went up against the Memphis Grizzlies and this exact thing happened. That alien nickname wasn't given, it was earned. He even manages to block a Kevin Durant jump shot which is incredibly rare. Only Giannis and Russell Westbrook have ever blocked Kevin Durant's jump shot. No human being should be capable of doing something like this. Speaking of Giannis and Kevin Durant, did you know these two are actually who Victor Wembanyama models his game after? It's no wonder that he's been dominating the way he has. The scariest part is that Victor Wembanyama did all that in his rookie season without many true playmakers on the team. The Spurs noticed this and decided to sign a 12-time All-Star and a 5-time assist leader, Chris Paul. Opportunity to play, uh, to, to hoop, to compete. Obviously, this is a first-class organization and um, for me, I've loved nothing more than the opportunity to play and contribute and, and, and hope. Chris Paul is the definition of a floor general and will always find the open man no matter what. Now that Victor has a true point guard, he will easily propel himself to a top 12 player in the entire NBA which would be extremely impressive when you consider just how much talent there is in today's game. You got people like Malachi Flynn out there putting up random 50 point games. When Binyama recently just won a silver medal in the Olympics after going head to head with Team USA. In addition to this, he made sure to warn everyone and put the entire league on notice that he's coming and won't stop getting better. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm worried for the opponents in a couple years. Yeah, NBA and people. Everywhere. He is definitely taking that gold medal loss personally and won't forget every member of that United States super team. 
He made sure to put on an absolute show, dropping 26 points on 11 for 19 shooting from the field, which roughly translates to 58% from the field, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists. Dropping this kind of stat line with players like Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, and Bam Adebayo all protecting the rim. Victor Rembanyama not only took home the Rookie of the Year award this year, but he also could have gone home with a Defensive Player of the Year award, which none of the three players that I mentioned earlier have received yet being much older than Wemby. Wembenyama averaged a staggering 3.6 blocks per game, which was of course ranked number one in the league for most blocks per game. The second highest you may be asking, it's a tie between Brooke Lopez and Walker Kessler at 2.4 blocks per game each. Talk about smoking the competition. To everyone's surprise, none of the three men that I just listed won Defensive Player of the Year this year. When compared to the last seven Defensive Player of the Year winners, Wemby had a higher block and steal total than all of them. This list includes players like Giannis Antetokounmpo, Draymond Green, Rudy Gobert, Marcus Smart, and Jaron Jackson Jr. The NBA, however, decided to give this year's award to somebody who already had three Defensive Player of the Year awards in his trophy case at home, Rudy Gobert, who also happens to be French. Rudy Gobert is actually one of the few players that Wemby has a connection with as they would practice together often. Here's 16-year-old Victor Wembanyama versus Rudy Gobert. It's kind of crazy to see the kid holding his own versus Gobert at the time. Rudy and Wemby actually teamed up to become the front court for France's Olympic team and man, were they terrorizing teams. It was kind of reminiscent of Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson, with Hakeem standing at 7 feet tall and Ralph standing at 7 foot 4 inches, while Wemby stands at 7 foot 3 and Rudy stands at 7 foot 1, although Rudy Gobert is nowhere near as talented as Hakeem offensively. Victor Wembanyama is so much more than the blocks though. Guys don't even want to attempt a shot at the rim when he's around because they know that there's a high chance of them missing if he's in the area. But let me tell you, the Defensive Player of the Year award is a lot different this year because when I was scrolling on the BetUS website, you could see that Wemby has very solid odds to win Defensive Player of the Year. So for the next three years, I'm going to bet on him to win Defensive Player of the Year. And if you guys want to, BetUS is offering a 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. Make sure you gamble responsibly. Back to the video. I mean, you were watching when I showed the three-on-one clip earlier, right? Then we get to the other side of Victor's game. It's kind of hard to game plan for a guy that just does things on the fly. Nothing to see here, just a player that's 7'3", dribbling with ease and throwing the ball off the backboard to himself for a slam. If you thought that was good, look at what Victor did to Damian Lillard and the man under the rim tied for second in blocks per game. I never get tired of watching that play. I mean, can you blame me? If you ever take a look at Giannis in the post-game interview, you can clearly see that he was left in awe after playing Victor Wembanyama and said that whoever said Victor was 7'3 was a liar, while also claiming he was much taller than they said he was. No, uh, I've never seen anything like him, 7'4, 7 7'5, 7 I don't know how tall he is. He's not 7'3, he's way taller than 7'3. <laughs> Another great game that Wemby had offensively was against the Knicks on March 29th. This game went all the way down to the wire and even led into overtime. Jalen Brunson had put up 61 points on the San Antonio Spurs heads and on the other side of it, Wembenyama had 40 points himself. After a very hard fought game, the Spurs had came out of San Antonio with the win and defended home turf successfully. It was truly a must see game. As a matter of fact, the game was so good that the San Antonio Spurs are set to face the New York Knicks on Christmas Day of 2024. The last time that the San Antonio Spurs played on Christmas Day was 7 years ago. This is what I'd like to call the Wemby effect. All it took was one season for him to put San Antonio back on the map. Well, almost. They didn't quite make the playoffs last year, but maybe they will with the new addition of Chris Paul. Do you think Victor Wembanyama will become a top 15 player in the NBA next season? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And thank you to BetUS Sportsbook and Casino for sponsoring today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one.